So we have the how the the lift gang, the mm. lifters, they're turned they're turned to the government because again, the totally necessary master of disguise who was also in the auction for some reason. He's also the comic relief because he does a yeah. weird accent and doesn't have very good disguises. Yes. It, every disguise is like Colonel Sanders. That's the only disguise he has. He's <laughs> yes. like, I can do Colonel. Is it Colonel Sanders again? Yeah, that's the disguise. Yeah, yeah. he is. Uh, he's made by Interpol, who is watching footage taken of the because the NFT takes footage of the moment of its purchase. The fucking A Gunderson must have thought he was so cool when he was like, I remember that. Wouldn't that be so meta? It's like Banksy shredding his artwork. When I called him A Gunderson, I meant like a singular Gunderson. But I like the idea that we've we've turned him into like. Sort of, I don't know, Aaron Gunderson. It, it's yeah. short for AR-15 Gunderson. <laughs> Again, average American name. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. you, you, you've, you've got Big Shortman and you've got AR-15 <laughs> Gunderson. That's right. Uh, uh, the American family. Mm. <laughs> so the, he, is, he is made because he's such a terrible master of disguise that he flips his cane from hand to hand that, again, he doesn't need. What if he's just a steampunk guy? We, 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 we Yeah, we kick the sort of like enhance CCTV scene out of the way early when Agent Gladwell is like, yeah, he's fucking faking that limp, I guess. This is the bit of the film that fucked me off the most, mm. because the, this is a, an element of the plot that makes no fucking sense, and it doesn't make no sense in the way that the rest of the plot doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, like, internally. They're like, oh yeah, we've caught your master of disguise. This man was at an auction with a cane he didn't need. 40 years in jail unless you work for us. It's like, no, what? You've got nothing on him. He was just at an auction where they bought an artwork legally. Like, what What are you charging him with? Like, <laughs> why would he turn like fucking Interpol's witness all of a sudden? Like, they've got literally nothing on this guy. And then Kevin Hart's like, damn, the government finally got us after all these years I, I, of heisting. I, I, I love the concept of Interpol's witness. Also. You'd have right, also yeah. thought, just as like a side point, Point that if these if this was the lift team, that they would have a plan for lifting people out of those types of tricky situations. Yeah. yeah, compliance, full compliance. <laughs> I can't do twenty years in the Hague. I won't do it. I gotta like, turn into Paul's witness. It's like every hardened criminal knows, right? As soon as the cops <laughs> say anything to you, what you're gonna want to do is do a bunch of like Colonel Sanders bits and then tell them everything. <laughs> Why, I suppose you've caught me fair and square. I shall have to tell you all of the details of our little heist plan. It's fucking easy as shit being a cop. You just, like, you, you, you pick them up for something, they do some, like, southern lawyer shit to you, and then, and then they immediately lead you to their hideout slash... Uh, hype house. I, I suppose the time of the southern lifting man is all, all over. <laughs> we are we are half an hour into this hour long podcast and five minutes into the movie. Let's put a, let's step it's on it. Huh? Terrible. Like it's it's not worth watching. It's barely worth talking about. I'm mostly <laughs> here for the fucking tanga eggs. Right? <laughs> we uh the, the stakes are then established, which is my agent Gladwell. This is my tanga egg. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like <laughs> and the yeah. ultimate lip. Can you use a tanga egg to burp? <laughs> John Renault. <laughs> Considering the pace of this episode, you could learn a thing or two from Kevin Hart as the leader of the Lyft group. Right? We could we could learn a thing or two from A. Gunderson because he fucking at least paces a movie within what an hour and a half. <laughs> Ma'am, you don't fuck the egg per se. You fuck the lining of the egg. I should clarify. Getting getting confused, and ordering a team of egg. Yeah, <laughs> the egg is more of a receptacle for the masturbatory sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marketing gimmick, if anything. <laughs> yeah, we establish the stakes of the movie, which is yeah. um, uh, Jean Reno, uh, also known as the other good actor that the other good older actor yeah, that they hired. Remember yeah. Leon the professional? He, he's yeah. in this for like a minute. Yeah, and that's what I love about it, about this though is that like him and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, they must have like argued some kind of a Seagal provision in their contract. They're like, fine, I'll do the movie, but I will be seated. Yeah, I'll be yeah. seated yeah. for the duration. D'Onofrio is it's like seated for the duration, but he gets a couple of scenes. Jean Reno is like, I needed an extension to my house. Mm. And so <laughs> that's, that's that's why he's in this movie, you know? Yeah. They heard that Jean Reno doesn't get up for less than a million dollars. So like, will they... you stay seated for half? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they, they also, they've given Jean Reno the Einstein haircut. That's the only way I can just go. I've never seen Jean Reno look this insane. You know, like, why is his hair like that? So who is, Jean Reno is Lars Jorgensen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Average Swedish man, Lars Jorgensen. <laughs> yeah. So, Lar so Lars Jorgensen 
yeah. basically is he's been like shorting the airline stocks and planning 9-11 for yeah, years yeah. and years and the, years. They're doing the fucking Casino Royale thing again. He's mm. Le Chiffre, except uh, worse. <laughs> he's Swedish Have Le Have you Chiffre. heard of 9-11, Mr. Bond? You've taken care of your buddy. I think you'll find, well, in Sweden we call it 11-9, because that is the correct way around. Nothing happened on the 9th of November, did it, Mr. Bond? Perhaps you'd like to enjoy some of my lutefisk. <laughs> and so they're like, we're going to, we got, Lars Jorgensen has hired a hacker group, Leviathan, that's also comprised of sort of very like telegenic sort of 20 somethings, who, by the way, when they come on screen, are all killed immediately. Yeah, they're all really into hobs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Leviathan, who has hacked all of the water supply of the entire world and is going to start flooding cities. So that Lars Jorgensen can make money shorting utilities. Yeah, this is fucked as well. Because like, if you're if you're that good at computer hacking, which no one is, if you're like so good at computer hacking, you can like cause the apocalypse with computers. Why are you relying on this man to give you money to cause a flood? Like, you could just make money yourself with all the computer hacking you do. Why? Also, you, like, crucially, that money has to be because Leviathan are so good at hacking. They don't trust like bank transfers. It has to be in gold ingots, like they're Which dwarves. they're flying on a commercial passenger flight. Yeah, you, you can't get a charter. Yeah. This guy couldn't have sprung for a jet. Yeah. yeah. This is my last half a billion dollars in gold. I literally can't afford He's, a private flight. <laughs> yeah, sort of a liquidity issue. It's like the opposite of Taylor Swift. You know, even when he has a very, very good reason to have a private jet, he's like, no, I think I'll just go commercial, to be honest. He's been on fucking Skyscanner, right? And they, they have told him, uh, to just get like a Swiss Air. Have yeah. you heard of Ryanair, Mr. Bond? <laughs> the, uh, the flight prices are very attractive, but the baggage allowance is very uh, difficult, it especially costs- when you have a half a ton of gold. It costs 60 euros to, to store your half a ton of gold if you can't get it to fit into the overhead. <laughs> <That's bit. what laughs> or putting it all as henchmen's backpacks. Like a few of them, so they all fit in there. They're all just like stumbling onto the plane. <laughs> they booked out an entire Ryanair flight, each of one bar of gold. <laughs> the stuff that they do put the uh, put on the henchman for this flight is hysterical. But it's so awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get to it. Okay. It's so good. So we're gonna gloss quite a bit of what I would call Act Two of this film. Oh Jesus! Yeah. yeah. Just fucking Agent Gladwell comes to the yeah. hideout. Okay, but we have to talk about the hideout though because mm. this was so obviously. I, I I would describe this whole scene where she comes to the hideout as how, how has as how much did this brand chip in for that reference? Oh no, because because Ballymore, right? The company that built the building with the sky pool, yeah, must Michael have, Ballymore must have paid. <laughs> Very bad luck with swimming pools. Yeah, I know you wouldn't get in his swimming pool, especially not at that kind of height. Has he learned no lesson? No lesson. How, how do you learn a lesson from your own death? No, no, he didn't die. Someone else died no, in his Barry Moore's absolute height, height of hubris to yeah. build a second pool in the sky. Michael Barrymore, like, it's like if Daedalus had another son and was like, <laughs> right, we're going to build you some proper fucking wings this time. And then we'll show the son who's boss. <laughs> I think I'm, we're going to be better at flying with wax wings than anyone in the world, perhaps better than the gods. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but so, so he lives in the building with the fucking sky pool that we've made fun of before, the one with the giant, like, crack in it. Yeah, the one where if you take a shit in it, they have to evacuate Nine Elms. <laughs> exactly. And and Agent Gladwell shows up, he, like, hands her a bottle of Grey Goose and a weirdly close shot of the bottle of Grey Goose, and you go, how much did Grey Goose pay for that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's real bad. I, you know, it is. It's there. It's it's like the movie Food Fight, but with luxury brands. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah. And, and she's like, the vibe between them is that they have fucked one time in such a way that they fell in love when oh. they were both undercover. And and they were like, and they everyone keeps referring to that week in Paris, and then they both snap back. It was five days. No, she says it was. She five says days, it was five he days. Says it's a week. That's yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is gold from a oh. Gunderson. Mm. Yeah. Great work from Gunderson. And the vibe is, sh- you, you, you have to work to steal, lift this gold, and I'm mm. coming with you to supervise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, an Interpol agent, am going to supervise you doing I mean, there's, there's, crime. There, there's no, uh, as far as I know, no precedent for like cops kind of like undercover running crimes. That's never happened. Well, 
I, but not in the way that this movie is portraying it. No, that's true. <laughs> no, where it's everyone like she, knows that's what the cops are doing. She, she, she sort like, of like influences the lift crew to like try to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer, and then they yeah. all get arrested like two weeks it's, before. It's not like the cops were running Jokar Sarnayev to like take out a team of elite terrorists disguised as marathon uh, runners. Well, you say that, but you don't know, right? Maybe he just yeah. perfectly like aced that, right? You don't know. Boston Batman. You know how I got these pressure cookers? I'm Jokers. <laughs> God damn it. Um, R.I.P. Joker, Joker, son. I have you'd have loved the UFC.